I want to talk to you about your toolbox for health. And I want you to understand you have a much bigger toolbox than you know. There are so many tools that we can use to optimize our health and optimize our performance. And most people are not aware because the healthcare system isn't telling them about these tools. It's basically telling them about one set of tools, medications, and then maybe wagging a finger at them. Well, just eat healthier. Well, what does that mean? Uh, follow a, you know, a, a food pyramid. You know, and I'm sorry. I'm you know, I'm, over, I'm. That was a broad brush thing, but it's just the truth as well. So. I want my patients to know that there is a robust toolbox for health. Not only that, I want them to know their body is designed to be healthy. It is a finely tuned, highly complex system that when it's given the right information will return to you good health and body and mind. And I believe that when you experience that and you understand what your body can do for you, you don't go back. You don't go back to the bad habits that are sabotaging your health, most of which you never chose for yourself anyway. They habits that were conditioned into your operating system at an early stage of life. So this toolbox, I'm, I'm no artist and my handwriting is messy, but basically the toolbox for health. Now the first thing is you have to understand the truth of health. And I write about that in the, in the book, in my blogs, the book Authentic Health. Uh, you can go to www.drgusvickery.com and you can look at our blogs and look at the information we produce so that you understand the truth about nutrition and sleep and stress and physical activity and the other influencers of your health. So you have to have that, but then you, and, and that is a lot because if you're honoring that, then there's a good chance you're going to be experiencing pretty good health. And then you have to have information because it's hard to know how your body's performing uh, if you don't have access to information. So one tool is data. data. And you can't just hope that you know, your insurance company is going to give you the data you need. They'll cover some very basic diagnostic tests. Your, your, your yearly preventative visit where you get a cholesterol profile and a metabolic count and a blood count is insufficient to know your actual health status. I have many patients who will have a completely normal basic lab profile, meaning their blood glucose is 98, which is considered normal, and then their liver enzymes are normal, and their kidney function is normal, and their cholesterol looks like it's adequate. Many patients with that, and if they do more extensive testing, we will identify that their insulin levels are high, their hemoglobin A1C is elevated, they are insulin resistant, they're, they're resistant, they're on track to diabetes. And then we look at their lipids and we see that their particle distributions are way off. They have very high LDL particles with high levels of oxidized LDL and high levels of uh, inflammation. And so no, their cholesterol isn't actually all good. And the list goes on. So data more information about how is my body performing right now what do i what are my where are my blind spots and i talk about nutrient deficiencies that's a common blind spot so that's another thing tool but then you get into okay what do i do now i know that i, w I have this truth of health and i need to honor that to be healthy and perhaps i've been able to get data if not i at least understand that, I, that whether it's an issue with weight or brain fog or sleep or stress responses, and I know where I need to go in terms of which areas of my life I need to uh, intervene on so I can optimize. And then you look at, okay, well, what are the strategies that we have? Well, it's pretty interesting because we have a lot. Uh, pharmaceuticals. Now, sometimes people think I'm anti-medicine because I talk so much about some of the negative aspects of pharmaceutical influence in healthcare. And I do believe that too many people are on medications for problems that they could have solved themselves. And that that's, when you come into a doctor's visit with possible depression for the first time, that doesn't necessarily need to be mean, uh, mean that you need to be on an antidepressant. Perhaps uh, you have nutrient deficiencies, perhaps there are sleep issues, perhaps there's some mindset work you can do to improve how you direct your emotions. That would be the way to actually help manage a negative mood state, whereas a medication could be helpful. But I actually am a fan of targeted pharmaceuticals because pharmaceuticals are in fact powerful agents to potentially help you, whether it's control a disease or improve symptoms or promote health in some way. So we have pharmaceuticals. And then we have supplements. So people are a little suspicious of supplements, and they should be because there's so many folks hawking supplements and making claims about them that they'll give you something that they can't. But actually, most patients who I do extensive testing on do need supplementation. They need support for their biochemical systems, and they need nutrient support. And so we can use individualized 
targeted supplementation to help them optimize. So it might be omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D, and if they have an issue with methylation and high homocysteine, a methylation support formula, and if we know they don't detoxify well, we might add something to help support glutathione. You get the idea. There's a lot of different supplementation protocols that if individualized based on your actual need and targeted to you, are quite powerful and effective. And then we have options like individualized nutrition plans where we begin to understand your biochemical blueprint for nutrients based on your genetic ancestry so that you can begin to eat a diet that gives your body the information it needs to be healthy and eliminate the things from your diet that could actually be harmful for you. And for some individuals, that could be saturated fat and animal protein. And for other individuals, it could actually be plant sterols and, uh, <laughs> and some types of vegetables. So it's not as simple as go plant-based or go paleo or go keto. No, for you, there is a best diet. But finding your way there can be challenging, but food, let food be thy medicine. Food can be your medicine. And then hormone replacement. As we age, we'll have hormonal systems degrade. That we, 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 Our overall hormonal function erodes. Our levels of testosterone and estrogen and progesterone and growth hormone and other factors decline. And as we see that happening, one, we can intervene naturally, lifestyle change, supplementation, perhaps peptides, which I'll talk about in a minute, to try and improve uh, the hormonal health of the body. But for some individuals, they're gonna hit a point where optimizing their hormone levels with hormone replacement is a great and powerful strategy when it's done properly. I don't think that a 75-year-old male should just suddenly go from a testosterone 250 to 1800 and stay at that level. I see the problems that, happens with, that can happen with that. But I do believe that a a healthy, a 75 year old male who's trying to get the most out of life, who has testosterone 250, could definitely benefit from putting it back into an optimal range. Not a high range, not a low range, an optimal range. So when you're doing hormone replacement, you're monitoring, and you're monitoring for any downstream consequences of the hormone you're putting into the body. So if you're putting testosterone into the body, you might be monitoring dihydrotestosterone and estrogen levels, and you get the idea. So that we can optimize hormones, which can definitely help facilitate a better health span. And then we have peptides. I have a whole video on peptides. I am big on this class of biological therapeutics that are natural and have a, a just amazing uh, ability to fine tune our physiology and optimize our health. So we have peptides that can help with hormonal optimization, that can help with metabolism, that can help with cellular health, that can help with detoxification, that can reduce inflammation, improve immune system function, uh, improve aesthetics, give you a tan, help you with sexual function. It's a great class and it's very safe. Um, you just have to find a, a physician who really understands them and understands the protocols, and you have to find a pharmacy who understands how to prepare them. But peptides are a wonderful tool in our toolbox. And then we have technology devices. Um, and I'm talking about actual devices that modulate our physiology, such as red light therapy and infrared light therapies. They can improve mitochondrial function and collagen synthesis and help us recover from injury and reduce inflammation. And we have things like sauna, both traditional and infrared sauna that can help with detoxification. Uh, we have cryotherapy or cold plunge therapies. We have vibration platforms and that vibratory stimulus can do things to improve the health of the body. We have photobiomodulation devices that can actually improve the health of the brain and reduce reduce brain inflammation. Um, the, uh, uh, the, you, you get the idea. There's just a lot of different technological devices. Oh, pulsed electromagnetic field generators that can modulate our electromagnetic fields. One of my favorite is called NUCALM, N-U-C-A-L-M. That device is amazing for rebalancing the central nervous system. I have a, uh, a video on balancing the central nervous system that discusses that I believe that's the anchor issue, that's the hub issue with all of our health problems. Uh, everything else is an extension of a chronically unbalanced central nervous system and the NUCOM device when used consistently can rebalance your central nervous system and allow your body to get over chronic stress and past trauma and help you reduce your risk of, a, of, of mental health issues and addiction. So I'm big on that device. I personally use one. They're expensive 
but they're priceless in their own way. Um, and so anyway, all kinds of technology devices. And then tracking devices like this ring I wear, an Aura ring, O-U-R-A, that gives me information about my sleep, activity, and stress. So I can make uh, changes day to day based on real information about how is my body doing. So that's not all the tools in the toolbox. There are more, but I just want you to have the idea that if you're after your best health, and if you're tired of status quo healthcare, if you know the current healthcare system is unlikely to actually give you the level of information, the level of consultation, so that you can not just stay alive, right, and slowly decline, but you can optimize your health and optimize your performance, then I want you to know there's a robust toolbox available to you. But don't let your insurance company limit this. Your insurance company will probably cover this, and maybe this, but none of the other. So do not let your insurance company become the limiting factor on how you pursue your best health. If you need help with uh, a type of consultation where you can get the information you need and you can then choose the tools that are going to help you succeed on your quest for your best health, then reach out to us. Uh, our clinicians and me personally, we are trained in personalized health and health optimization. We have the ability to help people get the data and we have the ability to provide these types of strategies so that we can help a, people re a person reach their health goals. So explore the toolbox, think about health in a bigger way, and be prepared to use whatever you need to that could be helpful and not harmful to optimize your health. Have a great and healthy day.